And finally, it's time to close the loop. From bubbles to bangles to donuts to pizzas to car wheels to giant wheels. So many things. No wonder circles rule our world and command so much attention. So come with me. Let's get started on these amazing shapes. A circle. Yeah, a circle. This circle, for example, it's got parts to it. So I can either draw it like this with a free hand, or what I can do is fix a center and draw a neat circle around it. That would definitely be better when I use the help of a compass. Now, once that's done, I've got the center, right? Right over here. And this length, it's called the radius. And look, if I rotate this radius around the circle, the length stays the same, no matter where it goes. And if I flip this radius over to the other side, what I get, this length, is called the diameter. And the diameter happens to run to the center of the circle. Now, you may have a doubt, what happens if I do this? Well, nothing much. The line gets shorter and it gets a new name. A chord. Very, very simple. And now you're struck with a question. Define a chord. Well, it's really easy and logical. Let's do it together. A chord is nothing but a line that connects two points on a circle. So an important question. This is the diameter, right? Is this also a chord? To answer that, let me ask you another question. Does this connect two points on a circle? Of course it does. But this is a diameter. So what's the difference? There is a difference. The longest chord that you can draw on a circle is the diameter. So let's prove this. Okay, let's prove this together. So, take a circle. I have a chord over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep pushing it up. Notice that the length gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So right over here, I have the diameter. Let's note down the length and move on. And look, it's getting smaller, smaller, smaller. Which means that the chord over there at the center was the longest one, the diameter. So can I say that a diameter is a type of chord? But every chord is not a diameter? Yes, you can! Great, moving on. If I have my circle over here, and I have two points marked on it, this region is called an arc. And if you extend two arms like this to the center, this region is called a sector. Not easy to imagine? Ah, much better. Like this better? Much, much better, right? Now you know how important sectors are. It helps you decide how much of a cake you need to give your neighbor. Come on guys, let's get over pizzas and cakes. They're gonna follow us anyways over the coming years in all our chapters on circles, my promise. So, my plain Jane circle again. And here, I have a chord. If I fancy a little bit of color and shade this region here, voila, I get a segment. And finally, when I do a lap around the circle, let's start and go, 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 yeah. And that's one complete round. That distance I ran is called the circumference. A lot of words, right? But it's pretty simple. Let's revise it once. So let's summarize everything so it becomes really, really simple for you. So I have a circle over here. Okay. Now, let's look at the first part. This is the center. Okay. This is the radius. This length is the diameter. This is a chord. This region is a segment. Right? This is a sector. Whatever is outside the circle is the exterior of the circle because it's outside. And this is the interior because it's... And finally, this is the circumference. Take a look over here. All the parts are named. Pause the frame. Take your time to digest all the different parts of the circle. It's really simple. No hard words to think about it. Very logical words, right? And these words are important because you're going to see them again, again, again. 
So you need to understand how they have come about, how did we draw them, what is the difference between them very, very clearly. So that in the coming years, there's absolutely no confusion. You're crystal clear on the concepts.